It's always interesting to compare an old model with a new one, see what changes are being made from one year to the next. But this time we thought we'd take it to extreme. 50 years between the two cars, an original World War II Willys Jeep and today's Jeep Wrangler 4 litre L Sport. Well, what can you say about the car's styling? Despite being separated by over 50 years, the distinctive classic lines of the Willys are clearly still echoed in the new Jeep. OK, so the new Jeep is bigger, but they both share the same big muscle grille, oval headlamps and exposed hinges that give both that all-American rugged appeal. The Willys, however, does have some extras you won't find on today's Jeep, namely a shovel and an axe, just in case things become too tough for even the Willys. You can still see a family resemblance, but it'll be interesting to find out if they've got anything else in common at all. Well, it might be quite rugged and basic by modern standards. I mean, the thing's got manual wind-up windows, but compared to something 50 years ago, it's pretty sophisticated. We've got a 4-litre engine, of course, so no shortage of power to keep up with modern-day traffic. We've got a reasonably slick, though perhaps rather clunkier than desirable, gearbox. We've got a stereo, which of course you stand a chance of hearing over a more modern engine than in the old Willis. And we've even got a heater, though nothing as crazy as air conditioning. Ironic, isn't it, really, that the vehicle that today claims its descendants here directly from the original Jeep from the war should have grown into what many see as, well, a bit of a girl's car. It is a bit soppy. It's an image thing, let's be honest. Most of us aren't going to tax it. That said, the Wrangler is reckoned to be extremely competent off-road, and I can believe that. It's got all the right bits and pieces, a rugged chassis, a huge amount of articulation in the axles, plenty of power, and, of course, a reasonably sophisticated and solid four-wheel drive system. If you were to venture beyond the city confines, you'd be fine in this. Not that you're going to, are you? But enough of this mincing around, talking around town. What's the point when we've got the real deal waiting for us over there? All I've got to do is get there, across open ground, with no cover. God, this takes me back to Nam. Well, you can't be too careful, can you? Blimey! Even starting this thing is a butch procedure. Switch, choke, button, pedal. Geronimo, now which way is that bridge? It's also got about a thousand turns from turn to turn on the wheel to get the thing to change direction. That's why you see them on the films when they're trying to steer it, because you've got to. We've got three gears, low, intermediate and high. Through the transfer case, we've then got a low and high ratio gearbox. Supposedly, in high ratio, <laughs> you can't go any faster than 65 miles an hour. But as the speedo tops out at 60, <laughs> it's just like somebody's chucked a load of old bike frames and bedsteads into a skip and welded a car out of it. Of course, safety isn't what it is now. You do get to, well, you get this, <laughs> a strap. <laughs> no idea.
share a similar name, but let's be honest, they're more than a million miles apart. And I don't just mean the goal for 50 years between the two cars. Their design brief couldn't be much more different. On the one hand, the maximum mobility on the field of battle, and on the other, well, maximum exposure on the pose down the high street. And so, I salute my old friend, the humble Jeep. You may carry on, Lieutenant. <laughs>